Hello, everyone. I have a great show for you tonight. Hello, TikTok. Hello, YouTube. Hello, Instagram. <clears throat> great show for you tonight. Today, we're going to be talking about intentions. Now, when it comes to dating, I think between men and women, the approach that men and women take towards dating fundamentally are different at first, but end up sort of, they resolve themselves and become the same later. But at first, the approach for most cases, men sees a girl, thinks she's hot, want to hook up with her. Girls can see that too, but they also consider more long-term. Like, how, what's this guy's, what's this guy like? What's his life like? And that is in, in consideration for women. So, the intentions for men, when dating women, is... Would I sleep with her? Guys will dead ass approach women. They don't care what they do for work. They don't, guys don't care about how much money you make. Guys don't care about any of that stuff. What, what your life's like, really. They, they sort of ask you those questions, but they're really just trying to build comfort with you so that they can try to sleep with you. So that's most guys' intentions at first is to try to sleep with you at first, right? Women, obviously, need to be a bit guarded for that. Embrace for that. It's nothing wrong with that. You should you want the guys that are approaching you as a woman to be attracted to you, of course. Because if they're not attracted to you, you got a whole other issue down the line, let me tell you. But you want them to be as sexually attracted to you. That's a big part of it. So, but women, when it comes to dating, they they think about it, they think of it as in a different way. It's more like, okay, but what do you do for work? What kind of, what's your lifestyle like? What kind of car do you drive? Just stuff like that. Because it's important for them for their long-term mating strategy. Whatever. So the intentions are different at the beginning between men and women. My problem is this. It's when for the guys, this is particularly so for the guys. Girls too, but let's talk about the guys first. Men approach women with, with and they're acting as if their intentions towards the reason why they're you know, approaching them to you know, try to talk to them or whatever is different than what they're actually pursuing. You see? So if guys would just admit it up front, hey, I'm not really interested in anything else. I'm just, I'm just interested in sleeping with you and I'm probably going to be sleeping around. Then at least the women would get a choice. You see what I'm saying? They, they get to go, they get to enter into some sort of relationship with this person if they want to, knowing the fact that they're only really interested for sex, they're only really interested in me for that, and they're gonna be also seeing other people, and then you get a choice. Then you can, as a woman, can you agree or not agree. But the problem is, is that people pretend. Guys will just simply pretend that they're interested in more than that. To, little, to sort of woo you over, and then all while secretly having a you know, Tinder account on the side or whatever. <laughs> you see the issue with this? You see the problem? Is is nobody's really being honest about it. That's the problem. And where girls try to, girls do it too. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it the other way too. You can say, oh, y'all don't get away from this. Girls will pretend they're chill girl, cool girl, but really they're not. Uh-oh, not really. They've already had, they've already went over this conversation seven times in their head and in the group chat before they even got here. All right? So girls are never the chill girl, let me tell you. Um, so they act like it's all cool, casual, whatever, but it's not that you've already, she's already, you've been in many a discussion with her mother already. I promise you. So my point is, <laughs> my point is, is that men's intentions towards dating is oftentimes very simple and they'll, they'll sort of mask that and try to Lure, uh, lure you into some sort of relationship with them, making you think that you know you're the one, whatever. And so, what I think is, for women, if you want to get what you want out of relationships with men, just simply be ready for this. You got to understand that when when men are approaching you, they're not their true intentions. They want to sleep with you. Now, you can catch them. You can you can they want you. You should know that that that's their true intentions. And then once you got them a bit, once you got them in, and you got them hooked then a relationship can blossom. And that's where I think things shake out eventually. It eventually just shakes out. Where y'all end up together or whatever, or can end up together or whatever. Um, but just, you know, don't be upset by this. I see so many girls are saying, oh, guys just only want to sleep with you. So? 
So what? Wouldn't it be be Wouldn't it be a lot worse if they didn't want to sleep with you? You see what I'm saying? You see the issue? <laughs> so instead, instead of that, just accept that that's the reality and then just be a dope catch for them and then they'll want to keep you even after the sleeping with part is over. That makes sense? My point is guys, is just, I'm just trying to be clear with you about what the answer is. Like, so what it really is, is men are only, men don't care about your work. That's another thing. Men don't care about like what you do. They don't care what you, what school you went to, not really. They might care if you have a decent family because that, you know, that could help them in the future. They, but they don't really care about your career. They don't really care about your education much. They care about how pretty you are. So you got to put yourself together and be that. And then they're going to, and then they're going to want to then sleep with you after that. So if you're those things, Great. Then after that, can a relationship blossom? But just if that's what men care about and men are super visual, just be, just be, just attract them that way. Just focus on your appearance, your outward appearance. And then once they meet you after that, be dope after that. But what they're attracted to initially is your looks. Let's be, let's face it. Just focus on your appearance. Some of y'all can't just be, you know, sweatpants, broken bag girls forever. You got to put it together sometimes. God, lure them in. Once you got them, once the, once the Bible study's over with, then it's all good after that. Let your personality shine. <laughs> yes, girl, out with the heels. That's right. Russell, answer. Answer what? Let's see here. Do want intellectual women though. I would disagree on the education part. Well, it just depends. I think that uh, I think that a lot of guys care that the women are prettier. Way it's more important to men that they're that the women are pretty. Because let me tell you something. It doesn't matter how educated uh, educated you are. It doesn't matter how uh, what your how much money you make. Men will marry the waitress. They just will. They, that's just the way it is. Um, and if that because if that waitress is prettier, nicer than you, then. <laughs> they just will. It happens all the time. People leave their wives for the waitress, like for real. So um, they just don't care that much about your career. They just don't. Men just don't. Especially if they're a man of means. They don't need your money. Good hygiene is a must. That's a, big, that's a big one. I don't understand. Some people, men and women, just have poor hygiene. I think it's a parenting issue. Some... Something went wrong when they were being raised. Which then also, it's either they neglected them kids or they themselves, the parents themselves have bad hygiene too. That's just generational. Somebody didn't teach you to then. Because then otherwise it would be so important for you to teach your kids have good hygiene. Now them kids grow up to be an adult and they're walking around smelling like that, acting like they don't notice. That's another thing. Why do they act like they don't smell anything? You just used to it that much? Grown adults, men and women, men and women, walking around here like that's normal. Like they didn't, smell, like they didn't fill the whole room up with their aura. I'll tell them. It's embarrassing for me. Anyways, yeah, the hygiene thing is important. Men, men more than women are not very conscientious of their hygiene. And I just, like I said, I think it's just poor parenting. I, I, I genuinely think that whoever raised them just thought that that sort of lesson would teach itself kind of thing over time. And it's shocking how much I've learned in my adult life that just people, normal people walking around just have bad hygiene and they don't sm admit it. Or they don't even smell it. They're just so used to it by now because it's been so many years. God. So I just, uh, I just, you know, somebody, you got to blame the parents. Somebody should tell them. That it should be in like a, they should do like classroom education for personal hygiene. Swear to God. Because honestly, like it's kind of an epidemic. Like it's kind of like, it's everywhere. And how, how much of a letdown is that? Like for you? You mean, I'll give you an example. I've, this has happened to me. I've been on a girl. I've been out with a girl. Really like this girl. I mean, whatever. We're dating. Whatever. Comes down to it. Down to business. Whatever. Time for Bible study. And then as things progress, it's just the whole room. 
now just has an odor and it's like, what happened in here? Is it on? It feels because it smells like it's coming out of the walls. It's so thick. And then they act like they don't know anything, like they don't notice. And I'm like, yo, how, what do you mean? You can't tell? Oh no. You need to see a prof- like a professional, you know? And it's a shame that it's gotten this far that you gotta, you know, go book an OBGYN again, I guess. Cause I'm, I, why do I gotta be the one to tell you how come that wasn't your mama or somebody else? You see, I'm not blaming it. I'm not blaming you, I blame your parents. I blame whoever brought you up for this embarrassment. And I think they should teach that shit in public school. Straight up. (laughs) They really should, and they don't. That's what I'm saying, they don't. Men too, men too. They've been growing out, they've been growing hair out of their backside since the day they were born. They've never shaved or groomed themselves once. How come it's like a forest back here? How come? You know what I'm saying? It's just, I think that uh, they should teach it in, in public school. <laughs> oh, man. Video talk for a while. Yeah, it's okay. So that's, yeah, well, that's another suggestion. People are like, oh, we'll just video chat with people. Okay, yeah, you could do that. But then still, same thing. You know, who has the time? God, y'all not busy? Just video chatting folks all the time? That's so hard for me to be like, okay, well, next Wednesday at 7.30, I'll be on, I'll be available. Like, who, what? It's just harder. And that's just hard. So the answer is, you know, be more selective. Know who, know who you're meeting out for a day after you've met them in person and know that you have that. Because when you're in the person, here's the thing. It can be a bit awkward in person. There's not, it's, not, it's hard to break the ice in person. Fine. Okay, that's fine. But you immediately know, one, you're attracted to them out of the gate. You know right away. Okay, yeah, it's attractive, right? He or she. This goes both ways. And then two, no matter what, even if it is awkward, even if there's not a great icebreaker, even if whatever... At least you know immediately that there's some sort of a little bit something there. You can meet people. If you, if you meet people, for, this is a problem with meeting people online. Everybody caps online. So they look different than their reality is. That's men and women both. Men acting like they're way younger than they are. Women acting they're way um, prettier than they are. Whatever. They all doing some form of face tune. So it's just a straight fucking gamble that you're going to meet them and you're going to even be attracted to them in the first place. So that just kills it immediately if you're not attracted. It's like, okay, I'm going to sit through this prison sentence, I suppose. What did I do wrong to deserve this punishment? To sit down at the table for hours and get full ready and take an everything shower for hours just to be not attracted to you. Why am I in jail now? You see, that's how it feels for most people. Now, at least in person, you kind of know you're attracted to them. That's number one. All right. Number two is uh, you can immediately know if there's some level of chem- chemistry. I'm not saying you have some deep bond with a person immediately, of course, but there is just a frigidity to folks that you just don't click with, and that's just going to happen. You see. So if you meet them in person, friends, family, ugh, mixers, parties, events, whatever, you immediately know if there's some sort of connection right then and there. Right? It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be like a super great match even. It just needs to be like, I don't, you don't, you're just not, you're just putting me off. You're just weirding me out immediately. And so you don't get that online. You get like a highlight reel, camera roll. You see the problem? Not saying you shouldn't use dating apps, you know, it's just, you're just gonna have to go through a lot of disappointing dates, that's all. And it just sucks because who the fuck has the time? You see? <laughs> Feel so validated for the 900 hundred matches untouched. Yeah, exactly. So that's what I'm saying. It mo- Let me tell you, I'm going to predict the future on all y'all on, on all y'all's unmatched dates. Most of them are going to be bullshit. Like I said, firstly, first and foremost, they just 
appear uglier. O uglier and older or fatter or weirder, whatever. It's just some instant thing that you immediately know you're gonna get the ick. And this goes on both sides, no matter what. You immediately know. It's like, it's so, it's like so obvious. Um, instantly you can taste it. It's like you, the moment he pulls up to pick you up or the moment you as the man pull up to pick her up, you see it immediately. It's like instant. And I wish we could just do like a do-over, like a mulligan, like a two-minute fucking buzzer beater that I could be like, burp, burp, just rewind the clock fucking 120 seconds, just enough time to be like a family emergency came up and I got to go because it's burning down to the ground right now. I can't make the date. Sorry. I wish that was possible because otherwise you're just now stuck. <laughs> I'm just going to start being mean to people straight up. No, thanks. You look different. <laughs> Holy fuck. But to be honest, in a lot of ways, that would just be more honest than just like, okay, well, let's just see how it goes. I might change my mind. I'm not. I'm not. Your eye, if your eyebrows are doing like this, I'm not. I'm not going to change my mind. You're born with that. I don't blame you for it. I'm not mad at you because of it. It's just not for me. You know, I gotta, you're, you're making my eyes go crooked. I need a level playing field across that face or I'm not gonna get it. I won't stop looking at it. <laughs> God, and I'm not just, look, some of y'all really do be needed to deal with your eyebrows or whatever, but I'm not talking about you specifically. I'm just saying it's something, it's always something. Okay, so, and that goes for both, both sides, you know, you know, that guy that you liked on Tinder that has the neck tattoo or whatever, you know, he, he showed up looking like a, um, like a, like, you know, the off brand version of like Machine Gun Kelly. It just looks different because the lighting was different and the tattoos a little faded here and it's not sure anymore. You know that shit immediately. And it's just like, why y'all? Yeah. You're, you're not being nice by sitting through the date. You know? He's going to end up spending money that he's not even going to fucking get any value from because you, you you're not going to see him again, let's face it. You know that. That's the thing. Women know that immediately. They know immediately. He's going to feel like an, a, an asshole or something. He's gonna, the energy is going to be off all night. You guys ever sit there? I try, here's the thing, I try to take an interest in people, even people that I'm not attracted to. That's like a personal. Hang on a second, say, sorry. That's like a personal growth thing for me. I try to, I try to like, I try to take an interest in folks, okay? Um, that being said, I personally just have a hard time faking it if I'm not interested, but I try to take an interest in folks that I'm not attracted to. But some people, if you're not attracted to them, it's just weird all night. And it's just like, God, why are we doing this? Does that make sense? I don't know. Yeah, it's hard. So it's just, I think it would just be more honest if people were just meaner. It's quick, cut it quick. Yeah, sorry, my screen's a little, screen's a little crooked on TikTok. Sorry, guys. There you go. <laughs> Okay, uh, if a guy puts you in the friend zone, there's a good one. If a guy puts you in the friend zone, but flirts with you, can you get out of the friend zone? Here's the thing. You can be the guy's friend and he'll sleep with you. Even, you know, if, if, you're, if you're a guy's friend and he's attracted to you, he'll still sleep with you straight up. But he's not gonna marry you, you know. So you gotta know what you're getting into. If you're cool with that, no biggie, you're probably better. But just gonna, if a guy's like not wanting to date you or not trying to date you, but you make it very easy for him to, you know, have Bible study with you, ma'am, most guys will do it. But he's never going to buy a ring for you. So if that, if you don't feel like you're wasting your time, then go for it, ma'am. Do your thing. All right. What if he's married? Uh, Caitlin, what are you asking? Very good, so true. Um, why are men trying to rush coming over to your place? Well, 
it's not, let me tell you something. They're not trying to rush to come over to your place because they want to see how nice your apartment is. They just think that they're more likely to sleep with you if they're in the comfort of your own home. You see? I think that's a bit backwards. I think you should invite the women to your place as a man, but maybe he's, maybe he feels as if, if you, maybe the guy that you're dating, and I don't know this guy you're talking about, but maybe the guy that you're dating is embarrassed that if you came over to his place, you might not want to sleep with him anymore. You like look around and see that he's got a pillow and a navy blue comforter and no duvet cover and a bar of soap in the, in the bathroom and no toilet paper. And he might feel like it won't work if you come over, you know? You end up drier than the Sahara if you visit his place. So it's better for him to come to yours. That's why. <laughs> uh, let's see here. <laughs> yeah, cobwebs in the corner, yeah. That's right. What do you do if your boss is an attorney? Wait, hang on. Ooh. Okay, Jelena, the reason why I don't answer your question is because you keep asking me to meet you in person over and over and over and over again. And obviously I'm not going to commit to that because that's fucking ridiculous. And it's ridiculous for you to keep asking. And if you keep asking me the same question about meeting up with you in person, the answer is fucking no. And also stop asking. All right. I don't listen. Ask me questions that are about the live. I'm not going to meet you in person. I'm not going to go out of my way to meet. It's just not going to happen. All right. So stop asking the same questions. I see your questions. They're just dumb questions. You guys get it? Ask me questions. I'm talking about the live. I'm not going to meet you in person. All right? This isn't a dating app. My God. Okay. How soon, should a second, how soon should a second date happen after the first date? Well, it just depends. If it, you know, there's, no re, there's no stop sign. You can, just, you can have a date Friday and have a date Saturday. That's not typical for busy adults, whatever. But it's, if, you, if you guys see each other, you know, want to see each other back to back, that's cool. That's all good. Just uh, there's no time limit. The answer is just no, there's no time limit. If, he's, if, he's, if he sees you one day and then doesn't see you again for a month, you better be running the world. And that's the only excuse. That, that, it just means you're just one in the, in the numbers and not that into you. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Is every two weeks okay? Yes. If, you, if he's a, if a grown ass man with responsibilities, it's realistic that, you know, yeah, okay, he sees you on Thursday, that he's busy, might not see you until the next Saturday, something like that. That's normal. It's totally fine. That's totally fine. Let's see here. Is it a red flag if he lives with a girl? Is it a red flag if he lives with a girl and she's pretty? No. I mean, here's the thing if she's pretty and he's a straight man, and he's probably thinks she's pretty too, but I'm gonna tell you right now, I have, there's a lot of girls in my life, like around me a lot. Um, I, have, I have beautiful assistants and employees, and and there's there's just let me tell you just straight up, there gets to be a point where you're, you you kind of get past that, you know, you, you be a mature adult, and you can move past those things, and you lose that. There might be love for people like around you in your life, but sexual attraction. Um, becomes like such a far distant thing that that's not in no world. You see what I'm saying? But roommates, you got to be careful, man, because roommates be during them dry spells. They both be having they're low key hooking up probably. And they out, they play it all cool. Like they're just friends, but maybe it's, they've been sneaky links for two years. (laughs) 
Sorry. What to do when your attorney boss keeps dropping hints? What to do? Uh, Camille, <laughs> Camille Law student. Hey man, there's no, listen, there's no uh, rules against, well, there might be company policies against you dating your boss, but man, man a man marrying the, his secretary is a tale as old as time, let me tell you. That shit, <laughs> that shit is, uh, is just, yeah, I don't know. He's a handsome attorney. Uh, you know, it's the same way with nurses. Nurses have full-blown husbands at home, but still be flirting with them doctors. Got a good, honest, truck-driving husband at home. Or stay-at-home dad, even. Somehow, some way, they find themselves in the arms or the laps of some white-coat doctor. I don't, you know. Just kind of is what it is. Just disclose that shit to HR so they know what's going on. They don't get any complaints. No PDA in the office. <laughs> oh, Jelena. Oh, sorry. I know. Sorry, Jelena. I know that hurt your feelings a bit. But for the last three lives in a row, I talked about me going to Paris, and you have relentlessly talked about meeting up with you every single live, spamming it every ten seconds, and then get angry when I don't answer your question about obviously I should meet up with some stranger in some other country whom I've never met, and not interested in meeting. And you keep saying, saying it to me. I'm not trying to hurt your feelings, but you brought this on yourself. Why would you just keep asking? Don't you give up? You see? And then after two weeks of this, when I finally, when I finally reply to you, you, you're upset now I'm the bad guy? Guys, if I don't answer your question, the answer should be obvious. The silence is clear, okay? Not trying to hurt your feelings. That's exactly what I tried to avoid. But you wouldn't let up. And you start doing other subversive things to get my attention. And it doesn't matter how many pictures you send me. If I don't reply, I'm not going to fucking reply. Sorry. See what I'm saying? It's hard for me to be mean, but y'all pushing me. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. How long do I wait for a guy uh, to long distance? How long do I wait for a guy who do long distance relationships before I wait up? Well, it's a thing. Long distance relationships. If y'all haven't met... And um, y'all doing long distance, y'all haven't met, and it's been, I don't know, two years. You got to know he's got some girlfriend back home. You got to. Like, come on. But if that's how, if, that, if you guys are okay with that, that's cool. If y'all, if you guys are okay with that, that's cool. Um, but, you know, uh, what are you going to be, pen pals forever? Y'all got to get together soon, because otherwise it's like, um, other, otherwise it's very difficult, uh, you know, for anything to go go, you know, blossom. Y'all just pen pals for, you know, God knows how long. 